Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Sokola, and this is the top five strategies for vocal executive phone presence. Now, we talk to people all the time, sometimes more on the phone than in person. And sometimes it feels like we spend more time playing phone tag, leaving messages for each other, than in real conversation. So that means that a lot of people get to know you through your single outbound greeting time and again before they have a chance to speak with you in person. So whether it's that outbound greeting or the messages you leave for them in their voicemail inbox each time, what impression do those few seconds make? What reputation do they create for you? Does it reinforce or conflict with the images that you want people to have of you? That's what we want to work on today. Now, you can go straight through this program, and it should only take about 15 minutes or so. Or you can pause here and there and do the exercises with me one by one, taking as much time as you need to hone your delivery and create your message so that it, get, so that it leaves just the right impression each and every time. But before we start, ask yourself this. How do you want to be perceived? Do you want people to think that you are confident? Professional, friendly, approachable. Write them down. Then, think about what those characteristics sound like. All right, here's the warm up. I want you to pause this program and listen to your outbound message on your own voicemail. What's your general impression? Most people don't like listening to their own voice on a recording, so that's completely normal. But we're going to work on some key strategies today to change your whole impression of your speech within just a few seconds on a voicemail message. Ready? Here are the top five strategies for mastering the vocal art of a phone call. You may want to pause this program after we cover each strategy to listen to your outbound message again and focus on analyzing how you sound with regard to that single factor before we move on. Ready? All right, po uh, point number one, your posture. Sit up straight and take a deep breath. Mom always said posture mattered, and in this case, she's right. When you take a full breath, which you can only do if you're sitting up straight, then you're able to fill your lungs completely and your voice then gets carried out on that full breath of air. When you slouch though, you don't have as full a lung capacity, so you can't get a lot of air in. And when you don't have enough air, then eventually it leads to vocal fry and especially at the end of your sentences. You may start with a clear voice at the beginning of the sentence, but then by the end it kind of fries out. And that kind of tone often sounds sleepy or indifferent or hesitant. It certainly doesn't sound confident, positive, and inspiring. So make sure you sit up, take a deep breath, and let a nice, full, resonant voice come out, one that people want to listen to. All right, strategy number two. Plan what you're going to say. Don't script it, there's a difference. You need a couple of bullet points, a few scratched notes, a very simple outline. But it's important because if you don't, when you're unsure of what you wanna say, one of three things, and sometimes more than one, of three things happens. The first is that there's that awkward silence as you're trying to figure out what you want to say. That's choppy, it's not smooth, it's not sophisticated sounding, and it doesn't breed confidence in the listener, that's for sure. The second option is that in lieu of those silences, we fill them with what's called fillers. And you know, fillers are um, those, those words that you, you know, use um, uh, to fill the silence because uh, we don't want them. And that certainly doesn't sound sophisticated. That doesn't sound effective. It doesn't, once again, create much of a positive image. The third option that many people will do when they don't know exactly where they're going with what they're saying, is to ramble. You all know the ramblers who take two to three times longer to say what they need than they actually need if they were to prepare in advance and just be able to clearly 
concisely and effectively articulate bullet point one, point two, point three, make your comments, leave your message, deliver it well, and be done. All right. So strategy number three, introduce yourself clearly. Now, most people on a voicemail, when they leave the message and they say their own name, they say it so fast that you can't understand a word they're saying. Now, if someone's calling you, they may wonder if they even got the right number. But if you called and left a message for them, there's a really good chance they won't even bother to call you back if they have to listen to your message two, three, even four times to figure out who you are. And of course, as you're leaving your name for someone, you want to make sure to use my signature strategy for self -introdu introductions. First, say your name a little bit slower than you actually think is necessary. It doesn't sound slow to them. They need time to catch what you're saying. Then with your voice, here's what you do on your first name. You go up, hum that with me. Hmm. That's it. And that's like saying I'm not done yet. That's some information, but there's more to come. Then on the top, you have a tiny little break and that break acts like a sound, a word boundary in that sound break. So people know that, okay, that's the end of data point. Number one on the first name, prepare for data point. Number two on the last name. Then for your last name, you want your pitch to fall. Hum that with me. Hmm. And that's like putting a vocal period at the end of your name saying, and now I'm done. So for me, when I introduced myself on the telephone, I'd say, hi, this is Laura Sokola, Laura Sokola up, pause and down. So if you're leaving a voicemail message for somebody else, not only do you want to do this at the beginning, but I would also bookend the message by reminding them at the end again, especially if they don't know who you are at all before this first message. So remind them once again with your name and your phone number at the end. And now those, that last, uh, that last point has to do with the tonality of your voice, which is related to the final two strategies in our list. Tonality is the contrast in the highs and the lows in your pitch, in your voice. Now these last two strategies are the opposite of each other and at the extreme, they're equally awful. So we want to make sure to avoid them. The first is the monotone, the vocal flat line. A lot of people leave messages in a monotone without realizing it. They run through the information just to get it done as quickly as possible. There's no inflection whatsoever. So as they're speaking, it just sounds completely engaged, excuse me, disengaged, like they'd rather be doing just about anything other than speaking to that particular listener on the phone. And they just want the whole thing to be over as fast as is humanly possible. That's not very engaging, is it? So what's important is to slow down a bit if necessary, add some inflection to the voice, which sounds like you actually think that your own information is important, which is a good thing. And it also makes it more interesting and easier to follow for the listener. Now, strategy number five is the opposite extreme to that monotone and it's referred to as upspeak. And this is another thing we want to avoid. Upspeak is that pattern where people are talking and it sounds like everything's a question, even when it's not, which is really typical of voicemail. Can you hear what I'm doing now? This can be really annoying to a lot of people, which makes them either tune you out and, or just not want to call you back. Plus it sounds really insecure. Even if you're not insecure about what you're saying, it sounds like it is because it sounds like you're constantly asking questions or asking for validation, like you're implying, right? Or, you know, as if you're not quite sure. So it can really undermine the impression that you're trying to make. Now, if you followed your strategy number two about organizing your thoughts ahead of time, then you can also remember to add those vocal periods. Like we discussed in strategy number three, when saying your name after each point, before moving on, that's adding your period. And that helps to avoid upspeak. For example, can you hear the difference in these two renditions of the same message? Hi, this is Laura Sokola with vocal impact productions. Today is Tuesday, March 9th. 
I'll be out of the office in the morning and returning around 1 p.m. So please leave me a message with your name and number and I'll be sure to return your call within 24 hours. Uh, if you need immediate assistance, please contact my assistant Anna at 212-555-1212. Thank you. Okay, now version number two. Hi, this is Laura Sokola with Vocal Impact Productions. Today's Tuesday, March 9th. I'll be out of the office in the morning, returning around 1 p.m. Please leave me a message with your name and number, and I'll be sure to return your call within 24 hours. If you need immediate assistance, please call my assistant Jane at 212-555-1212. Thanks and have a great day. Can you hear the difference? Okay, now look back at the list of characteristics you wrote down at the start of this program to refresh your memory about the impression you want to leave on people when you speak. Next, pause the program one more time and listen to your outbound message again. How many of these five strategies do you demonstrate? How many are missing? And where does your delivery style reinforce the image that you said you want to, people to have of you? Or how does it sabotage that image? All right, now it's your turn. Go back and re-record your outbound voicemail message. You may want to practice a few times using your voice memo app in your smartphone or tablet first. But remember that these strategies are useful not only for leaving a voicemail or an outbound message, but it's useful for any other conversation that you have. And as these strategies become second nature to you, they'll be sure to help you to leave the impression that you want every time you speak with someone. I'm Dr. Laura Sokola. For more information about these strategies and how to leave your vocal executive presence image with everyone you meet, go to www.vocalimpactproductions.com. Now you have the tools, so go and make your vocal impact.